back at home, it's, it's good to have a wider awareness of how um, the sector works and um, where the connections are, where the opportunities for, for collaboration are, for working together between funders yeah. um, on different programs or different, different projects and, and also just that, that process of re reflection, always reflecting and refining whatever we're doing. The, the international help, speakers help. are superb. I mean they've been carefully selected and people like Kevin Murphy who's coming to Australia in the next couple of weeks was outstanding yeah. as was Emily Tower Jackson. Um, you know so to me that's what I'm looking for is the is that that overseas talent. Um, the last session I went to the the environmental session the case study on the Pew Trust was so um, a process, just a but session. one of the things I have been thinking about has been um, you know as as community trusts and as governors we create frameworks in which to assess grants or assess um, activities mm -hmm. and our frameworks are quite western in their design mm -hmm. and there's a question around how do we how do we adapt so that other types of constructs can be applicable in this world of philanthropy mm -hmm. and so talking about what does a Māori paradigm look what look like, what does a Western paradigm look like, and where do the synergies exist so that we can have that collaborative discussion instead of not understanding. And I think that um, it would be good to have more discussion about well, that. Well, I think that cool. definitely what I really liked about what she, what the work they've been doing is they really engage with the community organisations and the people that are affected yeah. by the work they do. So really engaging with the community. Um, and we are already doing sort of projects like that, but in my personal work, it'd be great in the future to be able to go and actually talk to those organisations and really get a sense of what's going on um, so that you're not just making decisions with, without being informed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I and think we've like enjoyed all of our, our group from Central Lakes Trust. I think yeah. the thing that stood out for us probably in those main sessions is that it's, it's a recognition that we're, as a trust, we're doing the right thing. Right. So it's a great endorsement because you often when you're managing a trust or a trustee, you're not certain whether, are you on the right track? Yeah. Are we thinking enough about it? And I think uh, there was a very good paper yesterday afternoon uh, which uh, just, or about the leadership and that, oh, Liz, Liz Gillies. yes, yeah. and that really brought home to us, yes, we are doing that. We're, so it's reinforced kind yes. of the direction you're going. Yes. Really, Kevin, so, at that no, that today, was, really, Kevin Murphy challenged everyone to start thinking about our roles as philanthropists in a different way, and that's very much what I'm trying to talk about, right. and I just thought his different take on it and the way he delivered the message and just the... Um, the fact that he talked about how little money it took to shake up this really incredible, you know, reform of a huge system. And I mean, we have this power as philanthropists that is so undercapitalized. Mm -hmm. And so I really love the message of encouraging people to um, get out there and use the other things besides grant making um, that we, you know, those other skills and uh, access that we have to decision makers and flex our muscles in that way, which I think is uh, where our field really needs to go. And is there anything that um, you has, is going to make you think about the way that you guys? So your work, I know you're here more is to impart your experience. But no, you I'm always you learning. Can, yeah, <laughs> that you can take, that you picked up on, that you might, you know, look at how you do your work in the state? Um, well, I, I am you know, just interested in just hearing the different styles of how uh, people do things and I think you always pick up little tidbits and for me it's all about the relationships and the people you meet and so I expect maybe um, the future is really going to look different because of all the people that I've met here. Mm. So I feel like the conversation is going to continue beyond the conference for me mm -hmm. in a way that I'm very, very excited about. And so I may not have, um, you know, got uh, uh, you know, gone to a lot of sessions while I'm here. Yeah. For me, the networking and the connections, the um, in New Zealand and Australia, because uh, Australia is pretty well represented here, yeah. has just been so exciting for me. And I think you always learn things, international experience, um, things are done differently, and we can always pick up things that we can bring home and uh, uh, you know, shake it up and do things differently. Definitely, so. and. Uh, I like what you said about New Zealand being on the cutting edge, mm. you know? Yeah. 
I really feel like New Zealand because of the fact that this is a young field and um, there isn't this sort of old style entrenched way of doing things that there's tremendous um, energy here and willingness to um, do do the latest and greatest and experiment and I really do feel like philanthropy in New Zealand is on the cutting edge and there's more innovation here and creativity and willingness to an openness to try new methodology about the work than I see in these sort of big institutions in the states that have been doing things the way they've always done them for a long time. So it's very refreshing. The biggest highlight is just the numbers, the sheer number of people that are here, and there's just been this buzz in the hallways mm. that I sense is a, is a bit of a step change for philanthropy in New Zealand. And it feels to me like there's a wave of enthusiasm and engagement and new ideas that um, has been building for the last few years. Oh, good. So and it's very exciting. Uh, yes, there is a yeah. definitely a buzz. And that, have any of the speakers been stood out for you so far? Oh, that's a good question. I loved Bronwyn Golder talking about the Kumadex because yeah. I just think that is such an extraordinary model of innovative and high trust philanthropy. Mm. Big money, big issue, high trust. They're just letting you go. And they're just letting you go because mm. they trust her. I think it, I think that's fabulous. Mm. Tim Broadhead, I think, is wonderful. I think he's the wise man of philanthropy in the mm. world. He's like mm. the philosopher that you mm. you want sort of sitting sitting at the end of your bed telling you the stories. Mm. Kevin Murphy, yesterday, I thought was fabulous. Yeah, he's had a lot um, of good comments yeah, at yeah, that, that stage. Yeah. Yeah. I thought um, Emily Toe Jackson and her story and her family story and her modesty, mm. but actual sort of underneath that there's a steely determination to make a difference mm. and so yeah. the you know the sort of complementarity then with Stephen Tyndall who's been in the game a lot longer than mm. Emily you know so there's a generational difference yeah totally. he's been in the game a lot longer but he, you know very similar Our, thinking. I like mm. the new ideas uh -huh. and there was a great new idea on social um, bonding social bonds you yep. know? and so that's new and then you also have um, a very advanced uh, program on how to get kids into the work. I think definitely the first session with yeah. Emily Toe Jackson because it was a family foundation which really resonates with Hugh Green Foundation yeah. um, and the fact that they chose something, they chose an inequality and a social issue and they just dug so deep into it, found out what was happening and made a real difference to so many lives. Yeah, amazing eh? Yeah, so I think that one was absolutely stand out for me. The other one was um, was it Kevin Murphy yesterday that talked about um, agitation? About yeah. We were sitting around this morning with the Canterbury Funders Network and saying there's so many inequalities happening down there at the moment. This is exactly what we should be doing. Yeah. You know, we should be discussing and making a stand together that people should be treated equally down there. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So as a result of anything that you've heard, do you, do you know yet whether you're going to take any different approaches, perhaps from what Kevin was saying? Or? Absolutely, definitely. I think I was sat in an evaluation workshop as well, and at the moment we don't strongly evaluate the real stories, which is something that came out of it. We look at well, how many people turned up to that therapy session we're funding, or how many youth are now being mentored, it's what's different in their lives yeah. from going along. It's not how many, right. it's what's happening. So that's definitely something we'll take away. It's about getting those stories. And then I really enjoyed Manuka Hinari's quarter the workshop about the impact uh, that, that uh, Māori gift giving and a better understanding of uh, Māori gift giving as a way of better informing community trusts and um, the philanthropy sector about how Māori um, the sorts of attachments that are placed on gift giving for Māori mm. and what that means in terms of um, relationships yeah. that come into play, which are not necessarily well understood by the philanthropy sector. It's probably as wide as I think um, could be. Okay. So I really did appreciate the opportunity that Manuka Henari gave to, and, I, and the conference organisers too, because I thought it was a really good, safe environment. Cool. That's who. Yeah, to talk openly um, and people not feeling that they couldn't ask questions because I, in all reality, I think that pe lots of people want to know what is happening in the Māori world but are not given the opportunity to discuss those things because it's perceived to be far too sensitive. Right. But I'd like to think that we're in an environment here where we are open to the discussion and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to non-Māori 
about Māori gift giving because I myself am a treaty negotiator right. who is looking at this whole thing and looking at the interplay of relationships. And so if we, if we are going to work much more collaboratively, which a lot of the speakers raise, is how do we work across sectors? How do we work across all, you know, um, all the different um, roles people and organisations play? How do we harness the collective energy mm. and resources to have a much deeper and greater impact than what we currently have? Certainly, I think the conference has, has been terrific this time. I think I've been impressed by both the diversity and the quality. I think, um, I think there's been a lot more. I put a lot more out of it this time, actually, than I have in the, the last time I came. Okay. I, I've got things that have really inspired me. I certainly saw an amazing group of young people in the youth and philanthropy session. Uh, some young people from Berks County in, uh, in, the, in Reading, Skype. USA, yeah. came over on Skype, and they yeah. were an amazing oh, example of actually not only how young people can can be trusted to give money and give it really really well but mm. also how they can be inspired to raise it which yeah. is uh, working for a community foundation where we're a fundraiser and a grant maker that's yeah. that's quite important so that's kind of inspired me uh, similarly I thought um, Kevin uh, Murphy's uh, speech yesterday to irritate and to agitate was just a showstopper and, mm. and very funny but very very powerful and a great call to action for us to you know not sit back on our laurels but uh, but really feel propelled to take positions of community leadership so those I think are probably the the two real high spots for me um, I've also gained a lot in terms of um, I suppose new knowledge um, in the crowdfunding session I thought was really interesting it's an area that I don't know a lot about mm -hmm. and so I feel as though I've kind of filled in a few gaps and it's made me think that Certainly, maybe with some of our more innovative funds, we should perhaps be considering things like, you know, crowd crowdfunding element of, of our own fundraising for major mm. projects. So.